maybe someone will send a message and someone will replace that method. Uh, maybe someone will tweak your class so it's not actually that class, it's now a subclass and you won't know any of this stuff. And in small talk, this stuff just works. In Objective C, it usually just works, but if you're doing this with optimization, it breaks. And so it's fine for the programmer to do this because he's now saying, I take responsibility for this, and if it breaks, it's my fault. But it's not okay for the compiler to do that because if the compiler suddenly breaks your code, people, people complain. It's, it's unreasonable, but it happens. Um, so, we now have a safe mechanism for doing this. Rather than the lookup methods just returning a function, it returns a pointer to a structure which contains one of its elements, uh, the function pointer, but it also contains a version and its owner. And so you can cache this, you can check, first of all, is it, is the receiver still the same class that you're looking for? Uh, and you can also see, is the version the same as it was before? So when you add a new um, method that overrides another method, you increment the version counter of the slot that it's replacing. And this means that then any um, caches will become invalidated the next time they're accessed. Uh, so this is, this is kind of fast now. We, can, we do this for loops and we do this for fast message sends. We do it in a couple of other special cases. Um, and the compiler can just do this. And because we're doing this in LLVM optimization, um, the same optimization is applied both to small talk and Objective C, which is kind of nice. uh, One of the things that gives C a huge speed up is inlining. So you take the C function, you call it, and the C function you're calling is small, so the compiler says, well, I'll call it, just insert a copy of it. Uh, this is actually the reason that C is really slow because C++ compilers do this to an insane degree, which means that you end up with all of your instruction cache filled with hello world, and by the time you get to line two of your program, you've run out of instruction cache and you need to go back to main memory, uh, which is why C++ does really well in micro benchmarks and sucks in the real world. Um, so it, it's difficult for Objective-C and it's difficult for small talk because we don't have this static calling, everything is dynamically uh, laid bound. But we can kind of guess which method we're going to be invoking. And uh, we can inline that. Um, it might work. It might be the right one. And then we just write in a little test which says, well, if we guess correctly, then go down the inline path. And if we guess wrongly, go down the um, other path. And we can maybe hit that with some um, uh, CPU branch um, predictor instructions, although in the latest chips they're largely ignored. But usually the branch predictor will guess the right path anyway, so it's, it's kind of useful. So I now have the traditional misleading micro benchmark that every compiler writer puts on that slide so they can say, look, this stuff is really fast in this specific case. Um, so this was just a simple loop sending a message. The equivalent code in C doing a C function call took three seconds with the same loop. So to do the, met the method lookup, we need to call the lookup function, and then we need to call the real function. So six seconds is kind of the theoretical best case. If the lookup takes no time itself, just the cost of the two function calls will take six seconds. So we compile this um, with no optimizations, it takes 10 seconds, so we're a third of the speed of C, and that's not great. Uh, we chuck in the standard LVM optimizations, and they do better register allocation and stuff, and now we're just a slightly bit faster. Uh, add the automatic caching, and now we're down to 4.6 seconds. Um, that's without the LVM optimizations, by the way, this is just with the auto caching parts, no other optimizations run. Um, you run the full set of optimizations, and now this thing that takes three seconds in C takes three and a half seconds um, in the late bound version. Okay, but there's another point after this. If you have a spec that's going to it takes two seconds. So, this is, this is kind of where I want to be with small talk. I don't want to be saying to people, we have all this late bound dynamic stuff, it's awesome. 
except for your performance critical stuff, which you'll still have to do in C. I want to be able to say, use small talk, it's fast, and it's awesome. <coughs> Um, so yeah, we have this question of fast enough, which is where people stop caring about optimization. And actually I think we reached this right up here, because half the time we don't even bother running these optimizations, and already your code is running and it's using 10% of your CPU, and you run all of these and now it's using 3% of your CPU, and you say, wow, great improvement. Um, yeah, so don't trust micro benchmarks because they're always misleading. This is why the C and Fortran communities love me so much. Um, you can have a really terrible compiler and a good algorithm, and you will beat an amazing optimizing compiler and a bad algorithm every day. Um, I have that Fibonacci benchmark I mentioned a while ago, and I tried writing a sensitive implementation of the Fibonacci sequence in small talk. And I write in the interpreter, and for any number greater than four, that outperformed the naive implementation in C. So a good algorithm will always be a good compiler. And one of the things that I really like about the late binding that you get with uh, Objective C and with small talk is that it actually encourages good algorithms. So I just have this little case study. Um, I said I talk about ICU, I'm going to do that now. ICU has its own internal string representation which just has a couple of primitive methods on forgetting a group of characters and one for finding the length of the string. And if you use ICU in C++ code, or C++ has this standard string class, and because C++ is all about the speed and all about the optimization, there's no late binding here, it's all non-virtual, it's all stuff that can be in line, so it's all really fast. Um, but, well, it kind of doesn't do everything you want, and you can't subclass it because it's nothing's virtual, there's no like, late binding, so everyone writes their own incompatible string representation. And this seems to be like a rite of passage, a project gets to a certain size in C++ and they think, hey, what we should do is re-implement the standard library. Um, my favourite one actually is WebKit, has a string class called WTF string. Um, it, it sums up C++ pretty well. So ICU, you want to use ICU from C++, so you take your C++ string, whichever one of these C++ string classes is fashionable today, and you copy it into an ICU string, and if you want to do, say, a regular expression match on the book you're writing, you're copying 100 kilobytes of text into ICU, and that's used up your data cache for that program, sorry, now you're back fetching stuff from main memory. And then you run the regular expression thing, and then you have to copy the result back into your C++ string. And, um, you know, this, this problem bites you at every line of memory in C++. So when we do this in Objective-C, we have NS string, which is an abstract class. Um, it has concrete subclasses, but they're hidden from the program where you get one of them, it's a class cluster, which means you pretend you're always using the abstract class, really you're using one of the subclasses, but you don't have to be aware of which one. And it's very flexible, every Objective-C program uses NSString, they may implement their own custom subclass, but they'll be using the same interfaces. And we implement one for ICU, so NSString has this very efficient get characters in range method, which just copies a range of characters into a buffer you provide. And it turns out this actually meshes really well with how ICU does it. So now we're doing a constant time operation, because we have the late finding. So when you do that same regular expression search on your 100 kilobyte book from Objective-C, you're now not copying all of that data over to ICU. So this is, this is just a simple example of a problem that people come across every day where if you start with the micro-optimization, you end up with much slower code than if you start with the late binding and then say, well, how do we make it faster later on? So this is one of the reasons I wanted to work on the small talk compiler because the only person who should be thinking about optimization is the compiler writer at the low level. If you're doing micro-optimizations in your code, you're doing it wrong. Um, and micro-optimizations are fine. 
So this means the only thing I allow to do is write a compiler. Um, another thing I just wanted to talk about very quickly is this idea I had ages ago that some of the Dev people have been playing with a lot since then and I've hardly touched. Um, the good internet runtime takes the sender as an argument when doing a message lookup. So this means we can now do things like intercept messages when they cross some kind of boundary put. So um, we can do stuff like implicit concurrency, you say if your object is a member of this group, then just send a message directly, but if it's not, then add it to a queue. We can do automatic serialization, so if your message is entering a group of objects, record it. <laughs> um, you can do access control, so you can say if your message is leaving this kid of not very trusted objects, really validate its argument. You can do some quite interesting things with that. Um, so very quickly, I'll just mention a few of the uh, um, frameworks that we have in time. This is the problem with having a load of people who are small talk users, if you end up writing lots of tools and nothing with the tools yet. Uh, but uh, we, we have a lot of frameworks now and they're, they're getting to a state where they're solid enough to build stuff. So the Twilight Foundation I mentioned a while ago and it does tie all the messaging and traits and futures and prototypes uh, and all that good stuff. Uh, Twilight UI is a high level abstraction for user interfaces. So it has things like um, a tool model, so we don't have a need for an interface builder with a Twilight UI because you can just select the interface editor tool and now when you click on a button rather than it sending a button press, it gives you a little halo and you can drag it around and copy it and stuff. Um, it gives you a totally introspective user interface so you can say, um, let's show me a meta model of the user interface and now I have a view hierarchy tree. Uh, we can't because um, Quentin wrote a really, really nice demo and just before he sent it to me, um, his laptop died. Uh, if you can find them online, Quentin did a really nice demo at Fosterm this year uh, and another one last year. So hopefully those videos are online and you can see them. Um, but you can do stuff like that. you have a consistent view hierarchy, so Windows views, sub-views, they're all in the same tree, so you can take the tab uh, and you can pull it out of the window. Uh, we have core object, which does automatic persistence and versioning. So this gives us most of the benefits of um, images for small talk, but it also lets us do dipping and merging and branching and collaboration really easily. Um, and just finally, we have a bundle which is loaded by every running GNU step application. And this embeds the small sort compiler in any Objective-C application. And so you can say, I think this application sucks, I'm just going to write some extra objects that will be injected into it when it loads. And when it starts, you can replace some Objective-C methods with some small talk stuff. And yeah, it just works. So I have just about used up all of my time. Uh, but we still have a couple of minutes for customers. I can show you from here. What, what's your goal for this? Uh, well, so the goal is that, um, well, several goals. For Twale, we want to produce a modern desktop environment, which means desktop environment that isn't just a clone of Windows, but with more shiny graphics. Uh, which is basically what everyone has been doing for the last, well, before they were cloning Windows, they were cloning small talk, I guess. But there, there's been really little innovation in mainstream user environments. Um, Apple has now finally got to the point where you can kill an application and restart it and its Windows stay in the same place. And this is exciting and new. Um, this, is, this is stuff that Jeff Raskin wrote that you should be able to do. He wrote this in 1988. So it's, it's depressing how slow evolution is there. Um, the language kit, the idea is to have a toy for building dynamic languages. So we have Smalltalk as a front end because the project is full of Smalltalk fanboys. 
But we also have eScript, which is a really ugly language, but it's just there to demonstrate that we can do prototypes. Uh, we have a work in progress on Meta front end. And once that's working, then we can easily add new front ends with main specific languages. Very cool. So this was just the example I showed earlier. This is the shell script that's compiled. Um, and this is just a native FreeBSD executable. There's, there's no bit of that, no bind code involved anywhere.
So I, I can show you that in a second. I just was looking. Yeah, so this is Beam, which is a web browser that was written for Coco um, with no thought of portability in mind. And you can take it and recompile it with your new step with their uh, old and dated look. You can run it with your own theme and then it looks okay in a new interface. Or you can run it with the Windows theme and the Windows theme is using the native file chooses, it's using Win32 menus. Um, and all of this just works. Okay, that's fine. Um, for the big integer stuff, I possibly have an example of that. This is an example that I haven't tested for a while, so that probably means it will break as soon as I find it. Uh, my SSL <coughs> session is not working. Thanks a little while. Thank you. 